So let's take a look at 1041, the form itself. And it is one of the shorter tax forms that we have for entities. It actually is just three pages long. And uh, it is, as indicated there on the screen, what I would call a multi-purpose return. And that's a source of confusion for some individuals, even some tax pros, quite frankly, because a 1041 is used by the decedent's estate if the estate has sufficient income to require the preparation of an income tax return. It also is utilized by a bankruptcy estate. And then finally, it's utilized by trusts. And there can be a couple of different type of trusts that are using Form 1041. And if you look up there at the extreme left corner of the form, there is a checkbox section so that can distinguish the various types of entities uh, or which type of entity is filing this 1041. So as I say, that's it's, it's a common source of confusion, especially let's say when your client has passed away and their estate was of sufficient uh, complexity requiring an income tax return, and they perhaps had a trust requiring a trust tax return. And that's actually, at that point, two separate 1041s. We'll talk in just a moment about how it can be merged together in some instances. The responsibility for filing that 1041 lies with the fiduciary or the trustee. So. That, as I said before, that will be your point of contact, most likely, when you're dealing with trusts or estates. Uh, when the person in charge of an estate is commonly called the executor, the person in charge of a trust is commonly called the trustee. Now, in a small family situation, that may be the same person. But again, they're wearing two hats. They're the executor of an estate and perhaps also the trustee of a trust. And unless an election is made, that might necessitate two separate 1041s. And again, that's I see that as kind of a source of confusion for some people. The 1041 is used to report all items of income, deduction, gain, loss, and essentially all transactions that were performed uh, or took place during the trust tax year. It also records if income is to be accumulated or held for future distributions off to the beneficiaries. Uh, it also reports income that is to be currently distributed to the beneficiaries. It is, at the heart of it, trust income. But then the trust document may say income is to be distributed currently, which means within the same tax year, off to the beneficiaries. So it starts out as trust income, but then is distributed out to the beneficiaries, becoming personal income uh, on their 1040. And that's the function of the K-1. And it's a good thing tax-wise anyway, when that uh, liability, that tax liability is transferred to an individual because the trust, it will see, will look at the rate schedule for trusts, but the trusts generally are taxed much higher than individuals. You'll see that the, the rate schedule for trusts is severely compressed, if you will, and with just a small amount of income, they may be in the 35% or 37% tax bracket. So whenever, as a planning note, whenever income can be distributed off to an individual, usually then less tax is paid. But remember, if that individual is a minor or is not capable of, of handling their own affairs and things like that, then that would be the purpose of the trust, to hold that and manage it professionally so that it isn't wasted or spent carelessly, etc. So Form 1041 also determines the tax liability of the trust uh, if the trust has any income that is taxed to it for that year.